Stratigraphic columns, geologic maps, and block models all depict beds or layers of rock material, single layers called a bed, in groups called stratigraphic columns, or you can refer to as the group of layers as strata. So now we're moving on to stratigraphy. Stratigraphy is the study of these geologic layers. When you're looking at our geologic map of Santa Clarita, or if you're looking at a stratigraphic column, you can look at those layers to figure out a couple of things. One thing I had mentioned you can figure out is what kind of rock it's made of. But another thing you can look at is the relative ages of those layerings. While sometimes on geologic maps you will be given the exact ages of sediments in years or being given the relative titles of when those, um, those sediments were deposited, but sometimes you'll be given a stratigraphic column where you just have various layers and sometimes there's um, interactions between layers and deformation of layers and you'll be asked which ones are older, which ones are younger, what happened here. So in order to answer those questions in our labs, we need to understand some basic principles of stratigraphy. So our basic principles of stratigraphy, we have five of them, the first three of which specifically apply to sedimentary rocks. So in advance of this video, I had prepared some example strata to show you the first of our principles. So the first of our principles is original horizontality. So anytime we have sedimentary rocks being deposited at the bottom of a lake or ocean or a river or whatever they're being deposited, they will be deposited in a downward fashion resulting in a horizontal layer. You don't have deposition up against a cliff face or up against the wall or ceiling of a cave. It'll be downward resulting in a laterally continuous horizontal line. So horizontality is the first characteristic and that may change later in time. And we'll talk about that when we get to our folds and structural geology. But the second thing I'd mentioned about it being horizontal is that it's laterally continuous. So if you are at the bottom of the ocean, there's detritus falling down all over the ocean. So you create this laterally continuous all across the seafloor layer of grains that represent a certain point in time at which those grains had deposited. Now, of course, that layer is not going to extend beyond the boundaries of the ocean. So the lateral continuity has some constraints to it. If you have the lateral continuity of an ashen layer being released from a volcano, of course it's only going to extend as far as the ash carried, was carried in the wind. So you're not going to have laterally continuous forever. But what this means is if you see two outcrops that appear to match on either side of a canyon or a river cut valley, you can make the assumption based off of the positioning and rock type that those may be laterally continuous layers. You would verify that through radiometric dating, assessment of microfossils within those layers, um, etc. But you can look at these two layers on either side of a canyon and say those were probably the same depositional time or depositional event and a river later cut through it, thereby disturbing it. So with each of these, principles, there's a, a setting you have to think of. So the original horizontality, that has to do with an undisturbed sequence. You have these layers of sandstone and shale that you can see alongside the 5 or 14 freeways here in um, Santa Clarita, and you see that some of them aren't tilted, some of them along the 14 are all folded up. They weren't deposited in that way, they're originally deposited flat, and then something happened later on to tilt them or to fold them. So we have original horizontality, lateral continuity, and the third of those principles that applies specifically to sedimentary rocks is the lot of superposition. Now you didn't see me laying down these layers of colored beads here in advance of the video, but you know from these first two principles that all the blue beads were probably in one horizontal continuous layer. Same with all the yellow and the pink and orange layers as well as the green. And then if I were to ask you which one did I put down first, that would be asking about um, the application of the law of superposition. So it's the very same as if you were to make a cake. You're not going to be able to build on or add on the second or third layers of this cake without the first layer. Same thing with these. If I were to ask you which color did I probably pour in first? Probably blue. Even though it bumps up in the middle and appears to be disturbed, it is the bottommost layer. So with the law of superposition, the bottommost layers will be the oldest, the uppermost layers will be the youngest. So then again, if I were to ask you which layer do you think I most likely put on top, although they're kind of mixed up in some regions, 
it's pretty clear that the green is the uppermost layer or the uppermost sediments across this region. So those are probably the youngest layers. So in an undisturbed sedimentary sequence, you'll get original horizontality, lateral continuity, and then applying the principle or law of superposition, the upper layers are younger, the older layers are older. I mean, the um, lower layers are older. But, of course, you can get folding or tilting. So there's other things you can look at to determine the relative, older than, younger than, the relative ages of different sediments or different materials. So moving on, in addition to sedimentary rocks, we now have igneous materials. We have our volcano model here, and the igneous is depicted with the bright red with yellow polka dots magma here. We have some intrusions that go up and down and side to side. An intrusion, like the word intruder, means something that is pushing through or cutting through other material. With the principle of intrusions or the law of intrusions, we can also refer to it as cross-cutting because that's what it is doing. When something is intruding or cross-cutting, it has to come in after those layers were already existing. So with this magma here, it's cutting across all these horizontal layers, and because it is intruding those other layers, it is the younger material. We have up and down cuts that are referred to as dikes, and the side to side ones like a windowsill are referred to as sills. So dikes sills are intrusions, and whatever material they are intruding upon is going to be older, and the stuff doing the intruding is the younger material. Very similar sounding is our law of inclusion. So we just mentioned intrusions, and now we have inclusions. Inclusions are when something is inside. My example for that is a ball that a student gave me a couple years ago. I have a stegosaur and a light wrapped up inside of a plastic ball. They had to exist before they could end up inside there. They had to exist before they could be put inside. So just like with the law of intrusions or the law of um, cross-cutting, where the thing doing the intruding or the thing intruding was younger, with inclusions, whatever is included or wrapped up in something else is going to be... Your, your key as to what is what is older or younger. So whatever is being wrapped up or included had to exist already and is therefore going to be older than whatever is wrapped around it. So the younger stuff will be wrapping around or including the older stuff. With intrusions, you have the younger stuff intruding or pushing through the older material. So with those basic principles, we can begin to unravel or interpret some layers of sediment to uh, start applying, um, applying this knowledge and figure out the relative dating of layers.